February 21, 2021, a news reported that a teenage girl named Neetu Sharma has been bludgeoned to death by a man named Layak Khan. The reason was her refusal to agree to Layak Khan's marriage proposal, and so he killed her. October 2020, another news had come out. A young college-going girl named Nikita Tomar was shot point-blank by Tosif Ahmed. Reason, she rejected his marriage proposal and to convert to her, convert her religion. These two inc incidents are not one-off cases. They seem a, like a deliberate attempt to target Hindu girls. Today, I want to discuss this menace which is going on in our society for a very long time now. People usually call it love jihad. To discuss this, I have Rupa Murthy with me today. She is a social media influencer and has been fighting the left biases and exposing their lies. She is followed widely on Facebook and Twitter. But I am not going to ask her as a social media personality only. I am going to talk to her as a woman fighting for her sisters and raising voice against atrocities on them. Welcome uh, Rupa Murthy ji. Um, I am I'm, I'm very delighted to have you on the panel today. And uh, you know that at the topic of our discussion today would be the forced conversion of uh, Hindu girls which is happening almost at a rampant uh, speed in, uh, in India and elsewhere in, in, the, uh, in the world. So I know that you have been fighting this menace at least on a, on a, on social media where we where we want our uh, social media warriors to expose the um, lies of left biases. So, for, but firstly, I, I want to I want to I want to listen to your thoughts on the menace of uh, love jihad, uh, particularly in the case of India. Namaste. Thank you, Gauruji, for having me on your show. <sighs> Love Jihad, it's such a controversial topic. Um, you know, the left, leftists, the liberals say it doesn't exist. The right wing says it exists. Who's right? Who's correct? That's a big debate going on. Anyways, um, I would like to start off by refreshing and reminded, reminding the viewers of some of the cases that has happened recently uh, in India. We're going to start with 2018, Ankit Sharma case. Ankit Sharma was murdered in broad daylight in Delhi in 2018 by Shehzadi, his girlfriend, her, her family. The reason for murder, his family was against their relationship. 2019, an aspiring model, Kushi Parihar, was murdered by her partner, Ashraf Sheikh. 2020, TikTok star Shivani's body was found in her salon. It was rotting. Her friend, Mohammed Arif, was arrested in connection to that. Reason for that, Shivani refused to convert and get married to uh, this guy. 2020, again, TikTok star Sher Khan, who stalked uh, Naina Khaur, who was obsessed with her, he murdered her. The reason, she refused to do nikah with him. 2020 Nikita Tomer case, which became a big issue in India. She was shot dead by a guy named uh, Tausif in broad daylight. Why? Because she refused to convert to Islam and get married to him. Uh, 2020, Ikta Jaswal was murdered by her husband, Saqib. The interesting part about this is Saqib approached, befriended and charmed Ikta, posing as a Hindu man, Aman, married her. And after that, when she found out about his reality, when he asked her to convert, when she refused, he murdered her. Uh, 2021, 25-year-old Layak Khan murdered a 17-year-old 
Hindu girl, Neetu, for refusing to marry him. Uh, just recently, a 14-year-old boy in Karnataka was murdered by a Muslim girlfriend's family because they were against it. When such are the cases, and mind you, these are just some of the cases that I'm citing. In all this, victims are Hindus, and the cause for murder is differences and religious beliefs and ideology. Almost in all cases, the victims have refused to convert or the families are against a Hindu boyfriend or a Hindu spouse. So what do we call this? Is this not love jihad? True. Um, in fact, um, I, I tell you, uh, I think last year it was, um, I made a small video on uh, on on this uh, very topic on my uh, small uh, YouTube channel, and mm -hmm. I uh, got to know of a movie which came out uh, in 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 you know in support of uh, this uh, this menace in the society, which was the name with the, the name of that movie was the judge. Now in that movie, uh, there's a judge. Um, and a court he's listening uh, to a case in the court and he refuses to accept all the facts um, you know the girl it's, so, and, and he doesn't give a religious angle he doesn't understand the religious angle and the victim's sister is trying to uh, you know inform him and he she, she's trying to make a point that it in fact is a religious um, matter now uh, we, we we might be seeing a very uh, few cases um, at least in the five five six years but i i just want to uh, bring uh, this point to everybody's notice that uh, this is not something new this has been going this been going on for almost centuries now if uh, somebody is re remembers uh, the the song written by amir khusro it says chap tilak uh, sab chini so chap and tilak we all know that it is all you know is is worn by hindu women and tilak is again uh, part of our insignia um, in the hindu heritage so when uh, these people the girls and boys are getting converted um, into into islam uh, so you know it, the the sufism part of um, the islam takes over and tells kind of uh, tells them to uh, you know convert to islam anyways Absolutely. Uh, yeah so moving on to uh, the next point what what i want to know is that when something of this sort happens where where do we see the poster girls of bollywood uh, why don't they speak out against these inci incidents why why are they absolutely silent on this subject um, there are no protests. There are no hashtags on Twitter. There is. Uh, there are no placards. Um, so, is it is it because um, this is a life of a Hindu man or a or, or a woman? Um, you know, in this case. So, how do you see that? Hypocrisy. That's one word to uh, describe it. They outright refuse to believe in this whole concept of love jihad, when clearly there's conversion involved. They want to say the right-wing Hindus are uh, against this love and romance. We are against secular marriages. That's their uh, version. Coming to love and romance. Now tell me, why does Ashraf or Arif feel the need to pose as a Hindu Amar or Aman, befriend a Hindu girl, and you know, get into a relationship with her? Cool. Why this facade? And eventually, when the girls find out, they're murdered. Right. And our Bollywood celebrities, who are always ready to uh, 
you know, up in their arms when the victim is a Muslim, go mute. The hypocrisy is so much. An injured Muslim seems to generate more outrage than a dead Hindu. Why is it happening? I don't know, other than the hypocrisy. This whole romanticizing the interfaith marriages, leaving out what's actually happening, what the true intent is, is really causing a lot of harm. They say we are against secular marriages. Tell me, how is it secularism when I am expected to disown the religion I was born into or I practice or my family practices and convert to a new religion in the name of love or marriage or whatever you call it? Mm -hmm. Where is secularism in this? While I was doing uh, some research on this subject and uh, I came to know that there are there are so many uh, grooming gangs even in the UK. So forget about India. India is uh, you know uh, is, it, it could be a breeding ground you know and and uh, we could be thinking that this is happening only in India. But uh, let me let me tell you that if you go to um, Google and just type mm -hmm. independent and just type grooming gangs and the reports which you will find on uh, news outlets like uh, Independent and Guardian, you would be shocked to read all those. There were at least 19,000 Hindu and Sikh girls who were groomed by culprits, in this case, were people of Pakistani origin. It's not just the Hindus or Sikhs, even if it's the Caucasian girls that are trapped in this. Right. They are given this romantic picture mm -hmm. of, you know, you know how Islam treats women. I'm, you know, I'm sure it has its pluses. I'm not going to outright reject it, but the way they are portrayed is completely different than what the reality is. Yeah. So I think the the point here is that nobody is here is saying that we are against Islam. All we are right. trying to say is. Is, uh, is to bring out the hypocrisy of uh, a section of the community or the hypocrisy of the so-called uh, leftist uh, lobbies when they, they when they fail to see uh, atrocities happening on the on other communities in this world so there i mean we 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 are, we are not saying that uh, there there is there is any problem with islam the problem is the hypocrisy of these leftist lobbies they say black life matters i think all lives matters right? every life matters every each and every i mean we uh, coming from a coming from india and you know being a hindu we are being taught that every jeev has a has uh, you know as significance in this whole world. So why why are why are we stopping only at you know at this point? You know, uh, the only person till date who has been pretty upfront about the intent of these uh, interfaith marriages has been um, what was Syed Ahmed Bukhari. He was the Shahi Imam of uh, Jama Masjid. In 2014, I believe, uh, he called on Muslims to marry Hindu women and convert them to Islam. Of course, the uh, objective of this was to strengthen the, the Muslim population and the community in India. But at least he was very upfront about it. He mm. did not hide the fact. He did not uh, say this is... Uh, Ganga, Jamuna, Tezib, nothing. Right. He was very upfront about it. He wanted to strengthen the Muslim population and the best way was to get the girls from the majority religion and convert them. Right. At least he's being honest. He's not exactly. hypocrite, right? Exactly. Right. Makes sense. Now, so, uh, now we know that there is a definite problem in, uh, in, in this regard. And, and I think uh, at least in two states in India, uh, Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh, they have brought in uh, 
uh, few laws uh, against this. But do you, what do you think about this? See, the anti-conversion laws, I support them. Of course, the media, the Indian media calls it uh, the love jihad laws. It's not love jihad laws. It's for every religion. It's regardless of the religion. Anyone found to be uh, involved in unlawful conversions, religious conversions, through marriage, coercion, misrepresentation, uh, any kind of things that are that can be construed as unlawful, they will be awarded a prison sentence. This is not, you know, the popular claim is that this is anti-Muslim against Muslim men. That's not true. Right. What happens is, unfortunately, it's the non-Hindus that are mostly involved in these conversion activities. So it's easy for the media to hide that part and just portray it as anti-Muslim, anti-minority law. You know, this is how a narrative is set. A narrative is a skewed narrative rather is set by the Indian media that portrays Hindus as some demonic creatures who are out to oppress all the uh, Muslims in India. Muslims are unable to breathe, unable to survive in the Hindu Raj is what is portrayed, which is not the truth. I mean, just see what's happening now. A few days ago, uh, during Mahashivratri, a four-year-old girl uh, went with her mother to temple. It was an, it happened in UP. And in that crowd, she got separated from her mother. Next thing we know, she was found at the back of the temple. She was being molested by a 40-year-old man, Ishad. Did we hear about it? Were there placards held? Were there apologies being sought? Were there national debates? Did we have debates on media? There were nothing on social media either. Where are the celebrities hiding? Everybody now, you know, just now, a couple of days ago, a Muslim 14-year-old boy was uh, allegedly trashed for supposedly entering a temple just to drink water. Now, of course, there are different stories that are coming out where they're saying it was not water that he went after. Besides the point. But look at the outrage on social media that's going on. Sorry, Arif is uh, trending. Mm -hmm. While they conveniently disregarded this little four-year girl who was molested just last week. Right. In fact, I hadn't heard about it till about yesterday. Yeah, so that's so just the narrative that is being put out. Right. I think each and every crime uh, should be looked at not from a religious perspective, but at the or same time. Or even a gender perspective. From a gender perspective. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, uh, we should not be hypocrite about one thing and don't talk about uh, at all uh, where, you know, the majority population is concerned. Absolutely. Yeah. I so, have written numerous articles when Asifa rape happened. Of course, I wanted justice for her. Yes. And I was not going to make any excuses. Still, I got a lot of hate from the minorities that falsely claimed that I was supporting the BJP, was trying to shield the BJP. Not one article of mine made any excuse. My only intent there was the girl should get justice. The family should get some sort of some semblance of closure. Right. How, ma how many seculars, how many liberals have the courage to do that? Um, how many have done that till date? Not one. Not one. You're, you're right. Their, Absolutely. Their outrage is based on the religion of the, uh, the victim and religion of the perpetrator. That's how they, you know, they outrage. But do you think, uh, so now we, we were talking about uh, these laws in a couple of states in India, but do you think is this, is this going to be sufficient? Like I always say, yes, to an extent, this, these laws might help contain, I'm not going to say it's going to completely eliminate, 
but it's going to help contain the crime associated with interfaith marriages especially where you know women uh, mostly and some men too are murdered you know are conned into a marriage they're under misrepresentations and killed when they refuse to convert so what this these laws are doing is people who intend to convert after marriage or before marriage because of the relationship they're supposed to give a, a notification of sorts to the concerned authority i think it's the district magistrate mm. uh 60 days in advance which in my opinion might help you know this might also give a chance for the parents obviously when it's a public notice the parents the family might find out which might also help uh the parents to intervene now there's a flip side to this uh the feminists they say that these uh new laws pushes women back to parental and community control thus uh, it which you know they think it stems from these these laws stem from the patriarch patriarchal mindset which subjugates women and takes away their right to fundamental rights to choose a husband so i would like to ask these feminists isn't forcing a woman or even expecting a woman to convert her religion in the name of love or marriage also not a form of subjugation do you want to destroy and smash patriarchal mindset great go ahead and do it so why not demand the guy the prospective groom convert to the religion the girl practices or belongs to in this case a hindu why can't the guy convert to hinduism isn't that more along the lines of feminist ideology why are you all uh, supporting the subjugation of women by you know supporting such conversions and also i have to say it's not just the uh the government that has to intervene here it it also depends on the families you know it takes a village to come together and uh contain this right this menace no you're absolutely right and i think you made a very val- valid point here uh so f- this this would lead me to the uh, almost to the end of the discussion what would be your message to a common hindu girl um you know living in india or abroad it d- really doesn't matter but what would be your message at this point i want to address uh two separate messages one to the family the parents and one to the younglings uh it could be the boy or the girl now with the parents i want to ask them i want to appeal to them to ensure they expose their kids to hinduism early on in life make sure you teach them the concepts of hinduism make sure you expose them to the compassion the tolerance sanatana dharma espouses make sure you expose your kids to bhagavad gita ramayana mahabharata early on in life you make them fall in love with your religion you don't have to teach them to hate other religions which i don't think any hindu parent does that but what is important for you is to ensure your kid falls in love with your own religion so that way when they grow up as adults the chances of they disowning their own religion is almost none now to the younglings out there be very prudent when you're choosing your boyfriend girlfriend date uh, companion whatever you call it it is absolutely okay to socialize with 
people from other faiths. It's absolutely okay to have friends from other faiths. It's absolutely okay to admire and appreciate people from other faith. You need to know where to draw the line, when to draw the line. What is not okay is to disown the religion you were born into or your family practices because you want to appear secular and woke. What is not okay is to abuse your own religion in order to appease your friends from other religions. What is not okay is to convert to a different religion in order to gain acceptance from your partner. If your partner who claims to be in love with you or who you are in love with does not accept you with your Hindu identity, expects you to change. There is no love there. There's and it's, it's anything but love. It also shows disrespect to you as a person, to your identity, to your religious identity as well. And it may not make sense to you when you're young. But as you grow older, it will make sense. When you encounter such a situation, when you realize somebody is misrepresenting themselves for whatever reason, you need to take cue and run the other way. That will help save your lives. That's all I have to say. Really very, very, very valid points uh, which you have raised, uh, Rupaji. And I hope uh, our message goes out to uh, hundreds and thousands of uh, girls out there the, who might be uh, a target of this uh, menace, I hope. And for me personally, each and every life matters, it, irrespective whether it's a, it's a Hindu life or a Muslim or a Sikh. Each and every life on this, on this earth matters to me. So I hope that... Absolutely. Uh, so I hope the uh, so-called custodians of the society and the liberal gangs and the leftists take a note and uh, they they kind of um, you know mend uh, their way so that so many innocent girls and boys they are uh, they're not there for d to die. Uh, with this note, I just want to close this uh, conversation here. It was really a nice pleasure to have you here on on the Likewise. show, and uh, we hope to uh, see you again sometime. Likewise, thank you so much. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste.